Hey you guys, Erin here at Eat, Move, Rest and welcome back. Or if it's your first time to our channel, then welcome. So if you have not already, be sure to grab our free seven day health transformation video guide linked below in the description. So today we're gonna to be answering a very common question that we have continued to get over the years. Do carbohydrates cause weight gain? Will fruit make me fat? Isn't that going to skyrocket your blood sugar? There are many misconceptions when it comes to carbohydrates fruit and sugar in general. I'll preface this information with a little bit of a personal story that you can probably relate to. So in college, I gained a significant amount of weight and it was never due to carbohydrates or fruit. In fact, I was limiting my fruit consumption because I had the fear of carbs that the rest of society had placed upon me. Without doing my own research, I would go throughout my days eating one piece of fruit and then the rest of the day continuing to have sugar cravings, yearning to eat more fruit, but feeling like I already met my quota for the day, so it just wasn't possible. Lo and behold, a couple of years later, I found a couple of YouTubers who were living this fruitarian, high raw, or completely raw vegan lifestyle. It was totally mind boggling to me how someone could sit down and for example, eat an entire bowl full of peaches in one sitting and look as lean, healthy, and glowing as they did. So I finally figured if what I'm currently doing isn't working for me, then I've got nothing to lose and I'm just gonna do an experiment with myself on my own body to find out the truth for myself. So I began to enjoy as much fruit in abundance as I felt hungry for and whenever I felt satiated, I would stop. And I will say it's much easier to stop eating a bowl full of fruit than it is to stop stop eating a plate full of cake or refined pasta or bread even. The most exciting thing was my weight began to fall back into place and I was feeling more energized, more clear, more elevated than ever before in my life. On top of that, my digestion was 100% fixed. I was no longer fixated on fiber and how many grams I was getting to make sure that I was regular. It was just working like clockworks. It became second nature and I haven't stopped since. I want you to experiment. Go to Google and type in what is the body's preferred fuel source and lo and behold, carbohydrates show up. They are simply the body's preferred fuel source. Carbohydrates can be refined or unrefined. Examples of refined carbs would be white table sugar, even your breads and your pastas that have been highly refined. So you're kind of left with something that has been totally stripped of its fiber and other nutritional components as opposed to whole fruits and things like sweet potatoes and potatoes and whole wheat breads, sprouted grain breads and pastas that still have the whole intact or that still have the fiber intact as well as a plethora of other vitamins and minerals and micronutrients, things like antioxidants that provide so much benefit that we can't always recognize immediately upon consumption, but on a cellular level, they are feeding and nourishing us to help us to feel satiated. So most of us have been equating carbohydrates and fruit with the wrong F word, fat. We should be equating it with fiber. Also, what many of these unrefined carbohydrates contain is not only fiber, but water. So they're keeping us hydrated, helping us to feel fuller and more energized, but also that fiber is going to help reduce blood sugar spikes, unlike when you eat candy bars and other refined goods, which are going to spike your blood sugar. This is going to keep things a lot more stabilized with that fiber intact. Another question we get a lot of times is, why do you guys prefer to eat so many fruits during the day as opposed to vegetables? Fruit in particular is living, it's colorful, it's sweet, Completely satisfying, it's energizing. And while we definitely value including both raw fruits and vegetables, as well as lightly cooked into our diets throughout the day, we prefer to fuel with carbohydrate energy in the form of fresh fruit during the day because it is higher in calories, which equates to more energy. And if you think about it, fruit is growing up high on a tree. It's elevating, whereas most vegetables growing from the earth in the ground 
are more grounding and they make more sense to eat later on in the day. So you can also enjoy plenty of vegetables, but I would recommend consuming fruit along with those. Say, for example, if you wanna eat a raw salad for lunch, maybe try prefacing that with a bowl full of fruit. On that note, for optimal digestion, fruit should either be consumed alone or before other foods as it is the most digestible. Fruits like watermelon, for example, are best eaten on their own, preferably at the beginning of the day. Oftentimes we get tropical fruits from our local Miami fruit here in Florida, and we get asked, what do you do with that fruit? Or what do you do with this fruit? And fruit, plain and simple, is highly convenient. My simple answer is eat it. You chop it up and enjoy it or take a juicy bite out of it. No recipes required. So even if you're making a smoothie, they're so simple and effortless, but for the most part, just grabbing and going with your fruit is simple. You don't have to look up a recipe or do any cooking. It's also nature's perfectly pre-packaged fast food or fast fruit. Fruits like apples, oranges, and bananas, some of the most common and readily accessible fruits last the longest on your shelf, and they're easiest to take with you on the go. Diving a little deeper into the question of whether or not fruit or carbohydrates may cause weight gain, let's take a look at caloric density. Yes, fruit is higher in calories than vegetables, but we need to be getting calories from somewhere. A cheeseburger from McDonald's contains about 300 calories. You know what else does? About three apples or three bananas or a bowl full of berries if it's big enough. And the difference here is one contains empty calories that's gonna leave you feeling maybe a little bit physically full, but it's going to nutritionally leave you depleted, so you're going to crave more calories because your cells simply aren't getting what they need to be nourished. On the other hand, fruits, vegetables, and things like that are going to give you a wealth of micro and macronutrients. You'll be eating a higher volume and getting more hypernourishment to your cells. So you feel physically full and your cells do too. We've all heard it before, but weight gain really boils down to calories in versus calories out. What that means is how many calories are you consuming versus how many calories are you burning? And one thing that will help you burn more calories is boosting your metabolism. I have found that physical exercise helps me the most, but if I eat processed, heavy junk food that's not giving me the fuel that I need, I don't have as much oomph in my workouts, and I do feel like smoothies and juices and fruits and fresh veggies fuel my workouts so I have better workouts and increased metabolism for hours beyond that. So I highly recommend coupling your whole foods, plant-based diet with exercise. I should also mention not all calories are created equal. So 100 calories of fruit is not going to register the same in the body as 100 calories of a processed food. You can look at it like reading or like a math equation. Eating a bowl full of fruit is like one plus one, whereas eating a bunch of processed food is like an advanced calculus equation that your body might not ever come up with the right answer for. Also keep in mind that digestion, a natural process in our bodies that has to take place, is one of the most energy costly processes that our body has to go through. So if we can optimize our digestion by consuming highly digestible foods in the form of whole plant foods like fruits and veggies, then we're giving our body more energy to put towards other things like work and play and workouts. So it's more energy at a lower cost. A lot of people ask me, what do you do in the winter months when there's less fruit readily available? There may be less variety, there is still plenty of fruit. So citrus is always in season in the winter, for example, and we had just been traveling back home to Nebraska to visit family. It was cold and dry, but there was an abundance of little mandarins or cuties at the grocery store and we were buying bags and bags and bags. The kids and Dusty and I were just going through them. Literally on the airplane, I ate an entire bag of cuties to myself. I was feeling super hydrated. On top of that, getting plenty of vitamin C, which was a mega immune booster while traveling. And it's also great for collagen production and it aids in iron absorption. I could go on and on, but fruit is definitely easy to mono meal. When we do our retreats in Costa Rica, much of the time we are eating with our bare hands peeling mangoes, the juice dripping from our chins. I could probably eat about three to four mangoes and after that my body just says, it's not as appealing anymore and you know to quit. 
Like I said, it can be a lot more difficult to do that with other foods or when you're in a buffet line because it's overstimulation for our taste buds. The variety confuses and excites us and causes us to overeat. Just remember SOS, salt, oil, and sugar. There is no limitation on these when it comes to eating out or eating processed packaged foods, and they are excitogens. So it's very difficult to know how to say when enough is enough. If you can limit your exposure to some of those highly SOS heavy foods, you'll be doing yourself a favor. Much of the time when we're feeling hunger pangs or cravings, it can be due to a number of things like physical, mental, or emotional stress, simple boredom, or because our bodies aren't getting those nutrients that they truly need into their cells. If you want a good practice to regain what true hunger feels like and true satiation feels like, try a mono meal of just one type of fruit. Pick something that's ripe, seasonal, possibly even local, organic, so it's gonna be super juicy and enjoyable and just eat in abundance until you feel satiated and you can go on with your day. So the main idea behind a mono meal is it's one simple ingredient, one simple flavor, one math equation, or one simple thing for your body to read and to know how to utilize. Rather than focusing on what you're eating that particular day, you need to focus on larger trends. What am I eating 365 days out of the year? So maybe yes, during the winter, I'm eating tons of mandarins. Maybe in the spring, I'm eating tons of berries. Maybe in the summer, I'm eating tons of watermelon. If you look at trends over a larger period, you'll realize, wow, I am getting plenty of variety in my diet and I'm eating seasonally, which means I'm getting more nutritional bang for my buck. If you don't believe us, you can check out very reputable websites like nutritionfacts.org, as well as forksoverknives.com. And two of our friends, Fully Raw Christina, who is eating a fully raw vegan diet and has been for over half of her life, about 18 years, and mindful diabetic Robbie, who is also a raw vegan living with type one diabetes. He's one of the co-founders of Mastering Diabetes, where they are teaching people how to do the same things. Enjoy carbohydrates, enjoy fruit in abundance while living with type one and managing it well, and also sometimes reversing type two. So now that you're convinced, right? Let's talk about shopping, ripening, and storage tips. So we also get asked a lot, how do we get our fruit to be ripe and stay ripe without rotting? Especially when you're buying organic, it can be tricky, I know. So I highly recommend eating fruits in a certain order. Berries tend to be the most delicate, again, especially if they're organic, they're gonna mold fairly quickly. So I always make sure to eat those earliest in the week, right after we purchase them. Can also help to rinse them and prep and chop and put them in a Tupperware to keep them fresh even longer. Most other fruit isn't going to be quite as delicate as berries are. So I look at things like kiwi or things with a thinner skin are probably best to consume next. Again, this is gonna come down to what is the most tender and ripe. With bananas, we tend to stagger them. So we'll buy some that are green, some that are yellow, and then if we can find them, we'll even buy some that are already spotted. So the spotted ones are actually when the starches have fully converted into sugars, making them the best fuel for the body, the sweetest for smoothies. So at that point, we typically peel them, break them apart and freeze them for our smoothies. Everything else will typically stay on the countertops. So lemons, limes, oranges. When things start to feel soft and you're not quite ready to eat them, pop them in the fridge at that point so they'll maintain their current state of ripeness and freshness. I also prefer our apples in the fridge just because they're more crisp that way. We love Honeycrisps and Granny Smiths. Fruits like pineapples and papayas you're going to leave out as well, and bananas. They will continue to ripen on the countertop if you pop them in the refrigerator, it's going to halt their ripening. So leave those out as well. Fruit should never have to rot. Worst case, if you're not going to consume it, simply rinse it off and put it in a Tupperware and add it to the freezer so you can put it in a smoothie. We often get asked if we buy organic, and personally for us, we always say, vote with your dollar. If it matters to you, then it's worth the money. So we do buy all organic as much as we possibly can. 
That being said, if we want to enjoy pineapple and can't find a good ripe pineapple that's organic, we will sometimes opt for conventional. They taste wonderful. And don't let conventional scare you away from eating fruit altogether because studies have actually shown that the benefits of the nutrients within the fruit are going to outweigh any potential drawbacks or harms from pesticides and chemicals. Even more importantly is to opt for fruit that is seasonal. It's going to be the most nutrient dense. A lot of times there will be specials and sales on it in the stores and it's going to taste the sweetest. Usually you can identify what is in season based on what the organic options are. So much of the time conventional produce is offered year round, whereas organic is only available when it's in season. A good example of this is grapes. We love our organic cotton candy grapes, but they're usually only around in the late summer and early fall. Even better yet, if you can find seasonal and local fruit, one of the many reasons we moved to tropical Florida, I know it's not the case for everybody, but seasonal and local is the best option. You can even get into biodynamic farming where crops are rotated and you're gonna get the most optimal nutrition from your food. These are things that you can challenge yourself to investigate and see what options are near you. Fresh farmers markets and local farms are gonna be the way to go. We recently discovered a local organic farm about 45 minutes from us that we plan to do a tour of. Hopefully we'll get to bring you guys along for that adventure. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see it. And if you wanna start eating more organic but it's not within your budget or you're not sure how, at least start with the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 list. So this is gonna show you the ones to avoid conventional because they contain the most pesticides and herbicides and the ones that are probably the safest. Also, fruits with thicker skins like oranges and bananas are usually safer to eat conventional as opposed to something like berries where there may still be pesticide residues directly on the piece of the fruit that you're eating. Another great option if your access to fresh, ripe, local, seasonal, organic produce is limited by frozen. Studies have actually shown that frozen fruit a lot of times is fresher than fresh fruit because it's frozen directly when it's picked. So a lot of those fresh nutrients nutrients are locked in at the source. We love to snack on frozen mangoes and frozen cherries. It's one of our favorite after dinner snacks if we're still feeling that sugar or sweet craving. So my favorite ways to consume fruit. First and foremost, we almost don't go a day without our green smoothie. So it's not just full of greens. It's got mangoes, bananas, green apple, Sometimes we add in wild blueberries. It's super fruit packed, carb rich. It's so delicious. It tastes amazing. That one is one of our most popular recipes of all time in our meal planner and recipe app and in our ebook. I also love to have a bowl full of berries almost daily. You can never eat too many berries. They're so antioxidant rich fiber fueled and taste amazing. During the day when we're on the go, I've always got fresh cuties or oranges as well as bananas and Honeycrisp apples. There are never any excuses. There's never a reason to go through a drive through or get a bag of chips because I'm always armed with fast fruit. Smoothie bowls and nice cream. These are like a miracle to me. When I first started eating more fruit, I could not believe that it was okay to eat ice cream for breakfast, essentially. It tastes amazing with minimal ingredients and it's so good for you. Again, bumping up that fiber, that hydration, minerals, vitamins, and antioxidants. And for dessert, like I said, frozen fruit always does the trick. So if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave us some love in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed to the Eat, Move, Rest channel. And if you haven't already, check out all of the goodness in the description below. I highly recommend checking out our Eat, Move, Rest Club, which is our yearly membership, which you can get in on at 75% off for life right now. So if you want lots of healthy, fresh, vibrant smoothies, juices, salads, and beyond, we have our Eat, Move, Rest meal planner and recipe app included, our entire ebook collection, as well as our private Facebook community where we are going live on a weekly basis. We're doing group workouts, group coaching, Q and A's, interviews with experts. It's awesome. You guys got to check it out. Until next time, Eat, Move, Rest, your best. Bye guys. There are three things we all do every day and we could all be doing them better. Eat, 
move, and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, Olivia, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within. 